Hey, what's up, family? How you doing today, man? Welcome to Radio One Cleveland, New Year, New Money. I'm your host, Sam Silk, and uh, we got a great, great, great show for you today, man. Like, check this out. We all could use a reset after a challenging 2020. You know, 2020 has been really tough. And Radio One has teamed up with industry professionals to bring serious different like uh, series uh, events, virtual events for you that will help you. Um, you know, some key resources that can help set you up for the new year. Some of that being, and what we're going to talk about tonight is entrepreneurship and starting a new business, finances and building credit, education and knowing what is best for you, health, wellness, and mental health checks, okay? Uh, the opinions expressed during this uh, course of the uh, event may not reflect the views of Urban One and uh, any of its affiliates. So I would like to bring up our uh, panelists today. Uh, the one and only Larice Pinnell, who's co-owner and managing partner of CL Consulting Firm. Uh, he has a lot of uh, knowledge and a lot of experience doing a lot around um, the state of Ohio, and he knows uh, numbers. Uh, and he can tell you how to start a business. He can tell you what not to do and how to do it. And, and he's transparent. Uh, so I'd like to welcome you to the show, Larice. How you doing, bro? Hey, man. I appreciate you, Sam. No, thanks for having me tonight. And uh, WZAK and Radio One, uh, all the joining stations, man. It's always great to be on with you and to share any knowledge that I have. So, yeah, and guys, feel free to ask your questions tonight. Um, if you have any questions, we're going to be taking your questions uh, so Larice can be able to answer those questions for you. Now, first, I want to ask you, man, how did you get your start in business management, uh, tax, uh, finance, industry? And just explain your journey. How did Larice Purnell? Uh, uh, you know, tell us about how did you get here, man? Hey, man, it, it's crazy. Um, I went away to college. And one thing I'll just say, it kind of goes back to just my youth and just to be real succinct, you know, growing up um, in, in poverty, I just knew one thing. I, I did not want to uh, make sure that I, I lived that way as an adult. So when I, I definitely had to go away to college, went away to college and I went away, thought I was going to be a pharmacist. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I love numbers. I love, you know, science, but then I, once I got into it, realized that wasn't really what my calling was. Mm -hmm. um, I started to, to take some business courses uh, while I was taking science, organic chemistry and all that sort of stuff. And realized when I took it, the light bulb just came on and I realized it was a passion. Um, and sometimes as we send our kids away mm -hmm. to school, we kind of push them on what we want them to be. And we don't give them the opportunity to figure out who they really are. And I thank God I was able to learn that while I was in college um, and I performed well. You know, I started getting straight A's and, you know, I start going above and beyond, start um, joining different organizations. And, and I just enjoyed that. So I did that. Got out of college, graduated, went and worked for Fifth Third Bank, um, did that I right out of college in Toledo, Ohio. Um, and then from there, I relocated. I went to First Merit. Mm. Uh, which is now Huntington Bank, um, I was in that arena and came into the Cleveland market and became the CFO of the word church, started off as a finance director, got into the nonprofit area, and I handled their nonprofit and for-profit arena. And from there, just throughout the years, had the opportunity to work with some great mentors. Um, I, I had a couple mentors that was in the financial arena that really just helped, you know, to guide me and give me some great guidance. And and, and then the rest is history, man. I, you know, I've been able to evolve, you know, with just the guidance of those same mentors. So, yeah, yeah. Those steps and everything you mentioned are key. Um, you know, like you said, you found your way in college. You know, you, you, you say, I went for this, but then there was a passion. You started seeing the passion in other places. And I, I, was, I heard relationships through that whole process. You know, how important are relationships? It's, it's key. Um, like they say, is now what you know is who you know. Mm -hmm. and, and Sam, we talk about this all the time. It truly it has become that, you know, even the older I get and, and the more that, you know, God continues to elevate the things that I do. A lot of time it is who you know um, that can help you get, you know, and, and, and go down that path that you're trying to go down. Um, and, and they open doors sometimes that you don't even know that, um, you know, you wanted to even walk through that even existed. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you that relationships have given exposed me to things 
that I just wasn't aware of coming from a family where, you know, mom wasn't, you know, college educated, father wasn't in my life. So it's not like I came from a household where they talked about business. They talked about that next level. So some yeah. things I just wasn't exposed to. So when you have a mentor that is executive, um, you know, chairman of the board for a financial institution, mm-hmm. you know, those are things that, you know, I'm still getting to the place where I'm learning about. Um, so that exposure in those relationships um, are key in the knowledge that I've gained. OK, uh, let's dive into this. If someone is looking for uh, to start a new business, um, what are the five things they should do to get started? Five things to get started. A lot of folks watching now, get ready to have your questions, but you need to know these five things. Larissa, what are those five things? First, you must choose a name. Um, that That's simple. We're going to simplify it. You got to choose a name. You have to file for your tax ID numbers, your federal and state tax ID numbers. Um, and you can go to the IRS, you know, to do that. Your secretary of state to make sure you register your business. So if mm-hmm. you're listening to us and you're in the state of Ohio, you will go to the Ohio secretary of state and follow those procedures. And then while you're there, you're going to learn the structure, the type of structure that best fits. Are you going to be a nonprofit? Are you going to be a limited liability corporation? Are you going to be a corporation? And then, you know, another thing is you have to have a plan, um, you know, um, you need to make sure that you have that business plan in place so you know what your next steps and your goals are. The worst thing is to have a leader that has no plan and then he wants someone to follow him. Um, so and then a funding model. You know, a lot of times in our community, and I want to make sure I say this, when our businesses close their doors, you know, not only do they lose the business, but they lose their personal finances because they invest everything they have personally personally into right. getting that business started. So make sure you have a financial model for how you're going to run that business. Um, so those are five things. Um, I, I have a couple more, but but those That's are the few. Right. So you want to research the market. Sometimes yeah. we jump into business, Sammy. You know you've heard this because my cousin said this was the hot thing to do. Right. So he, because it was his passion, I think I should do that because he made a couple bucks over his lunch money. Um, so mm-hmm. we want to make sure that you know you do the research understand the market that you're going, make sure that there's actually a need for that product because mm-hmm. just because you love it don't mean the consumer is going to want to consume it. That's right. Just because just because you like fancy tennis shoes don't mean nobody in your neighborhood one can afford them or, or even have interest in them. And then make sure you pick that location, 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 location. Um, you know, if you could have the best idea, but if you put it in the wrong location, it has a better chance of failing. So those are just some things. And just make sure you put professionals in your life and let them do what they do. You don't have hire a mechanic to give you heart surgery. So why wouldn't you hire an accountant to give mm-hmm. you financial advice and make sure you put the structure in place? So and let, let me add this too. When you when picking a location and when Larry says do the research, uh part of that is finding out. Uh, the population demographics, uh, the ages, the incomes. Am I right? Yes. You know, that yes. means a lot to, to yes. in terms of what you're selling on who wants right. that product. Yeah. So what you can do is, and a lot of people just don't know this, whatever city you decide to go into, you can actually contact City Hall. Mm-hmm. You can ask them to give you a layout of that particular location you're looking at. They can tell you the, the traffic count. They can tell you the security um, concerns or safety concerns. They can tell you, you know, what the average medium income in that area is, you know, what businesses have been in that business uh, building. So are you one of 10 businesses in the last 10 years uh, right. or are you the only one or have that biz- business been vacant? So that helps you from a negotiation perspective as well. But you want to utilize resources. And there's something, Sam, a lot of people don't know in the community. Mm-hmm. There's something called community Development corporations, CDCs. You mm-hmm. have great organizations like Union Miles, the Mount Pleasant yeah. um, Development Corporation. You know BBC that's down there on Kinsman. You have Buckeye. You know um, those organizations. What they are, I call them like their own little city halls within our community. And what they can do is 
They can tell you what's taking place, what new developments yeah. are taking place, uh, what new projects are coming, you know, what new homes are coming, you know, what homes are selling for, you know, what is the projection or plan for that area? Because sometimes we go open something and don't realize you may be opening over here on Buckeye and don't realize Slavic Village is a new hot spot in Cleveland. So understanding where you're going and where the city is going is very important to making that decision as well. We have a question here from our audience. Uh, what happens when credit becomes a factor in starting a business? Hey, that that is something we deal with a lot. And, and that that is important. One. So when we deal with and I, of course, shameless plug, I mean, here at CLE, when we deal with our clients, that's one of the first conversations when we sit down with someone. We not only talk about how we help them create a financial structure. We ask them that uncomfortable question. What does your credit look like? Because in the beginning stages of a business, if you don't have that cash on hand, a lot of times you're going to be that personal guarantor. So your personal credit is going to be imperative um, to the success of the business. And now that's until it gets established. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like anything. I ask people, if you were the bank and you have no experience, um, would you lend you money? Um, so, so just in realistic terms, you want to make sure that you know, you start to work on your credit simultaneously as you have that plan. And there are great organizations here in Cleveland. Um, you know, it's, it's a place called Center for Financial, um, uh, Center for Financial uh, Wealth. And they're right there on Shaker Boulevard. And they're a nonprofit free service that will give you and help you with your credit. So absolutely. All right. Uh, do you believe uh, do you believe it's, you know, difficult doing this? climate we have right now to start a business. What's your take on that? It's a 50-50 for me. And some people think I'm crazy saying that. And when I mean it's a 50-50, because when you have people like us right now, we're on Zoom. So if you have a technology business, you're booming right now. Um, if we're in a house doing business every day, you know, um, Dr. Brian said something on one of my calls one day. He said, I wish I would have invested in a pajama company. Uh, where would I be right now? <laughs> and, and you might think that's simple. Yeah. I wish that I would have stocks in Home Depot because you're tired of looking at the same living room now. So everybody in America is painting their living room a different color. So for painters, y'all staying busy right now. So again, to that point, some businesses are thriving. But again, understanding the market, researching. I always say we spend so much time on things that add no value to our lives, reading it reading somebody else's life story, but we don't spend any time on things that we say is our passion and our purpose in life. Research what that's doing. Are, you know, is this industry growing? Is it mm -hmm. dying? What's taking it over? What's the disruption within that industry? Like right. in our industry, technology is a big thing. So if we don't understand technology in five, 10 years, we may not exist. But to answer your question is, is it actually is a great opportunity for businesses to thrive even during a pandemic, if it's the right. So think, Sam, you being a restaurant owner, you got to clean that business, right? Mm -hmm. So so one, whoever sells the cleaning products, whoever cleans businesses right now are thriving. So Big just stuff. make sure as you're thinking about that type of business, that you're thinking about businesses that have opportunity. Because unfortunately, during any pandemic or epidemic, there is always opportunity to create wealth. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we have a question from the audience. Feel free to send your questions. Any tips for internet slash home based businesses? So, a so right now, what 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 you're doing? So now, y'all been on Clubhouse. Uh, y'all y'all do the new thing. So for internet right. businesses, you actually have the advantage because we have businesses in our community, Sam, that have brick and mortar, but yep. don't have no online presence or they don't yep. even know how to approach technology because they're used to customers walking through their doors. So for internet businesses, you always have been online. So all I would say to you now is continue to you know maximize and maybe your business is because you've been on online is to teach other people how to create online businesses and make right. sure that they advance their businesses. So again, we all have to pivot. You know, what have we learned and what things are people's weaknesses? And not in a negative way. Again, if, if I don't, if you watch my business and you think I don't know anything about online businesses, then contact me and say, Larice, 
You can give me accounting services. I can help you uh, push your stuff online. So right now, we all know everybody is on the phone. They're all ordering online. Groceries are getting ordered online. Food is getting ordered on Uber. Everything online. online. Everything is online. Yeah. So, so again, for me, I would say you actually are in a great position because the real estate, um, commercial real estate business, retail business is dying right now. So you want to be very careful or strategic as you acquire new, um, I would say, take on a new lease. Yeah, yeah, that's real. That's very. Now, and that's something I'm going to give you all this one. Even if you do, you have to be able to negotiate a COVID clause. Oh, my Lord. I'm being real, a COVID clause, because right. nobody knew about, nobody could predict a pandemic. Now that you know, but what happened if they shut everything down? That's right. That's right. And so funny. <laughs> that's right. And you know, and, and I'm glad you said that, Sam. If you are in the midst of of negotiating a lease and you don't at least get six months of free rent, then you probably need to go back to the drawing board because again, understanding the market, um, you know, I get the opportunity to talk to you know brokers around the country. The retail business is plummeting. They're getting killed. All you have to do is look when you see a Pier 1 close. Uh, when you see major you know, stores and restaurants in our community shutting their doors, that means there's more vacancies. If we had vacancies before this started and now mm -hmm. you see businesses closing, there's opportunity to negotiate you know, as you go into this. So not only do you put pandemic clauses in there um, to ensure that if business doesn't rise the way you want, that you can go back and renegotiate, you know, your lease, but you also make sure that you allow them to scale because like right now, how can you predict and forecast what's going to happen in six months? Yeah. If you have that answer, I'll be honest, Sam, I want to go work for them. Yeah. And that's the golden answer right now. <laughs> Someone just asked me something um, uh, funny before the call. I said, well, it's really hard for me to say because, you know, you know, look at the climate. You know, right. it, you know, um, so, yeah. So, hey, guys, put your questions up. Feel free. We will definitely get to your questions here. Next question is, can you uh, speak to the beauty industry? And if it's good, a good idea to start a business now. So the beauty industry, um, of course, you know, is one of our more challenging um, industries. You know, I think, you know, and don't get mad at me. Uh, please. I don't want a, a lot of. Um, Negative DMs, but but Sam asked me to be very transparent on this call. I think, like you know, I've been saying since the beginning of this thing, it's a reset. Everybody should have learned by now. It's time to reset and get refocused in your business. And what I would say to that is, um, you know, for the hair industry, there was no respect. Um, you know, from a governmental perspective, that's the industry in our community that either didn't pay taxes and claim certain stuff. So then when it came to opportunities, you know, for PPP and all that, you know, they couldn't take advantage because a lot of people didn't have stuff in order. Everybody was trying to get refunds. Now, if I'm not talking to you, I'm not talking to you. But the ones I'm talking to, you know who I'm talking to. So I would just say in that industry right now, you have people that have decided to work from home, be it that if that's legal or not legal, people are working home at home. So if you are not in a position where you own a shop now, I would say this is not the season to be buying shops right now and investing in a shop. Stay where you are because the reality is we do not know where we're going. Keep one thing in mind, not to get political, but we have a new president that's coming into play, you know, in the next few weeks and things change when new presidents come in, be it, you know, positive, negative. We're not here to get into that. But the reality is, Corporate wise, corporate tax rates will change. You know, how small businesses are affected may change for the better, for the worse, whatever. You know, and we'll wait to see what happens there. So I would say to answer that question, you know, for that industry, I would just say make sure you're, you know, you're following your income, make sure you're doing your taxes, and you're, and, and sometimes it costs to do good business. Pay those taxes so then you can get capital to help you survive in times like this. Cause that's the biggest complaint I got, Sam, is yeah. people couldn't work and, yeah. they, and they didn't have any income. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like you mentioned, they didn't they didn't have it couldn't go and file for either the unemployment. That's uh, right. You know, because, you know, it wasn't self-employed. I want to 
since we talked about that, what are some of the resources available to new business owners? So you have people who are opening up businesses now. What are some of those resources that are available for them? Um, you know, I, I have to do a shameless plug. Um, CLE Consulting Firm, um, <laughs> one of the best accounting, tax, and professional services firm in the Cleveland market. Myself and my partner, Mel Tree Sharp, uh, we're here and our team is here to service you. Um, and we truly try to be advocates for small businesses and we work hard, you know, to make sure that we're here for our, for our clients and our partners. But I would say in the community, you have the SBA. Right now, everybody's SBA is everybody's best friend, <laughs> um, especially with this new round of PPP. But you have the SBA.gov. Go on there if you're looking for how to create a business plan. They have templates on that site that can help you look based on your industry. Um, you can go to your local financial institutions. Something we don't take advantage of. Mm-hmm. We put our money in places that we don't ask for any help back. Right. So you go, you go deposit your money every day into these financial t- institutions since you've been 16, early enough to work, and you've never asked them to sit down and help you, you know, to make financial decisions. Sit down and ask you, how do I start this business? What right. funding is out there? So utilize your local uh, financial institutions. Then you have places like the Urban League of Greater Cleveland. You have Jumpstart. You have ECDI. You know, a lot of great organizations. And if you didn't write them down, you can always contact as a CLE consulting firm, we'll go ahead and lead you to them um, as well. But those are some local resources that can help you out. And uh, the last one is score.org. And that's just nothing but retired CPAs and attorneys that as you're looking to launch a business, they'll look at that business plan. They'll give you advice. So those are just a couple of resources, you know, locally and nationally as well. Now, now, how did you know when you had the right idea to start a business? Like, when, when, like what's that... This is it. You know, what's that moment? When I what's couldn't sleep. Life? When I couldn't sleep, Sam, we, we don't talk about this, Sam. When you can't sleep, yeah. it won't let you sleep. Not yeah. for because because you just, you know, um, you 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 took a long nap, so you just was woke. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about when you can't sleep, brother. <laughs> when you are for days at a time, right? All you're thinking about is okay. Um, so I'll say is I got the great opportunity when I was at the Word Church, you know, to teach financial literacy and never thought I and Sam, we talked about this on a lot of occasions. I never wanted to talk on the stage. I ran from the microphone. People would say, no, Larice, you've got to share, you know, your passion. And I'm like, no, keep me away from it. And when I got on this stage, it was nothing about the lights, the camera, the action like they always talk about. Mm -hmm. It was when I started to see people's lives change. I realized, hold on. God, I didn't expect to to be in this place. And then as I start to hear more stories, I'm 50 years old. I never had $30,000 saved in my entire life. Larice, I'm 45. I bought my first home for the first time. Hey, I paid off $45,000 in credit card debt. Hey, you know, I paid my student loans off. I thought I was going to die with those. Then I realized then my purpose in life became truly my passion. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing something again, because it's a for a paycheck, when you have rough times, I promise you, you're going to realize that you just created yourself a job. You know, yeah. that's a hobby. But when when you're passionate about something and you know it's the thing you're supposed to do, you're willing to stay in the office at 12 o'clock and be the last one. First one in, last one to yeah. go. You're willing to invest everything you have into it because you believe in yourself. So, again, the best bet you can make is on you. But you got to know that it's your passion and be doing it for the right reasons. And it's for me, it's that that burning, that desire that just won't go away. It won't. You know what I'm saying that 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 I can wake up and bam, I'm right there. Or I can even dream about it. Yeah, that's right. I even get an answer. I've got an answer. It's gonna sound strange to you all, but I've got answers and dreams. Oh, me too. <laughs> me too. I, I don't even dream. So my family, and it's funny you say that, and my partner, Mel is probably listening, and my fiance, she'll tell you, I don't dream stuff. So Mm -hmm. when I dream it, it's like people around me like, okay, that means something. So I feel you on that, brother. But I'll tell you, like right now, I'm holding on to the side of the chairs because I want to stand up while we're talking. And that's how you know when you have the passion for something. Even as we're talking about this subject, I'm getting excited because, again, for me, it's, it's, it's not about me. 
And what I love about what I'm doing is about the people's lives that are being changed, yeah. the businesses that are being impacted, the jobs that are being created, the the you know wealth that's being created in our community, legacies. That's what it's about. So again, if you're focused on something because you're trying to get rich quick, it ain't gonna last long. Yeah, not at all. Guaranteed. Or 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 you trying to do something because someone else is is doing it. It has to be something you really want to do. It's okay to say, I admire what Larissa is doing. I, I admire what, what, what Ricky Smiley is doing, but it has to be what you want to do. So, so Sam, I've, I've said this to you before. It's two things. One is if, if when you know, if it's not, if it doesn't scare you, you ain't thinking big enough first. And, 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 and it's probably the right, when it starts to scare you, it's probably the right thing. Yeah. You're like, oh, like, you know, I might lose everything on this one. Yeah. Or, or when when God gives you something, I have to say I'm a spiritual man as well. When God gives you something, you know, it comes in. My mentor said it comes encrypted and nobody else around you understands it because it was oh, only yeah. for you. It was only for you. That's so right. your uncle ain't going to understand. Your family ain't going to understand. Yeah. Only yeah. you are because he gave it to you. So right. stop taking what he gave somebody else and making it yours and receive what he gave you. Yeah. So. And, 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 and let me add to that. Don't open up a business for your friends and family. You open it up for the consumer. That's right. Am I real? Because because look, <laughs> they will be the first ones to leave you. Now, uh, if my cousins them listening, I ain't talking about you, but uh, but yeah, they'll be the first ones to leave you. So that's why, again, you got to you have to love the business you open so much that if everybody leaves, yeah. you're willing to work it by yourself to make yeah. it happen. And, 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 and that's what me and my partner and say. Never, right. We 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 one thing for sure. Mel Trees and I, I love my team. I mean, I have the greatest team in the world. But we understand when it all comes down to it, right. it's going to be me and her. Yeah. So we got to put it together and we're going to have to do what it does. But because we love what we do, that's we that never scares us. Yeah, right. Now, we right. don't want that now. Let me, God, you hear me. But right. we just say it, it don't scare us. Right. That's real talk. Um, let's jump to this one here uh, from the audience. How many years does it take for a new business to turn a corner? That's based on the business. I've seen businesses, literally, I'm working with a business, uh, myself and Motrice, we're working with a business. They started the business last year off at $2 million. They're going to probably hit $17 million by the end of this year. So it, again, it is just based on, you know, the business, the person, the plan, the structure you have in place, the team you have, yeah. all those factors that will dictate that and it's based on the industry. So really you can't say that some businesses, because again, you got into it for the wrong reason may mm -hmm. take you a little longer because you're forcing what God never gave you. So you're doing it. It's, I call that a flesh move, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it, it's like, people say, man, Larice, you and Mel are rocking and rolling, but it's because we're operating what he gave us. Yeah. We, we don't ever question that what we're doing you know, is what we're supposed to be doing. Sam, what you're doing, we always talk about is what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. And when we talk about it, Sam, I don't ever hear you talk about you. You're like, man, I just hired four more people. I just hired, like, I'm like, okay, Sam ain't ever going to say how this works for him. And Z, and Z it's always yeah. what it's going to, how it's going to impact others. So for, to answer that question, that's variable. That's, that's a very broad, yeah. you know, but yeah. I would say you have a better chance to turn a corner quicker the quicker you put structure in place. Yeah. Structure is key. That's right. Structure is very key, you know? And so you can have this great idea and this is really a great idea, but you have to have the plan and the structure. Let's kind of talk about the business plan. Yes. Uh, with this great idea that you have now, how do I put it all together uh, so I can follow the structure of this wonderful idea? So that goes back to using resources, Sam, because the reality is if I'm a photographer, I'm probably not a CFO. I'm not I'm not a finance person. I'm not a marketer. Um, I'm not a researcher. I'm not an attorney. So when we start a business, in most cases, we try to be everything and don't realize we're already starting behind the eight ball. 
because you're, you're starting off with bad contracts because yeah. you tried to be a lawyer. You're starting off in debt because you tried to be an accountant. You're starting off. Don't nobody know your name because you don't know how to market. So the reality is you want to go ahead and get that team or go to these organizations like your urban leagues, like your scores and where they can tell you, well, hey, you're going into the hair industry. Well, yeah. this is what we've seen a hundred other, you know, um, salons do in order to be successful. So yeah. now they can give you benchmarks because the reality is you can just go based on your exposure. And, and that's only one mind or you can take five minds and then be exposed to different areas a lot quicker. So, again, uh, I would just say make sure you use these resources yeah. and allow them to help you. Because, again, within that business plan is your financial plan. Uh, it's your marketing plan. Right. So again, so making sure they align you with people that will help you, you know, make sure those are concrete plans in those particular areas. Yeah. And and listen, uh, let me say this, that, that pride will mess you up. Um, oh, my don't Lord. Act like, don't act like you know it all. Yeah. Um, I've learned on my journey. I ask questions. Uh, you, If you hear a number or something and don't be, don't do this. Oh, no. Ask, what does that mean? Because that very thing that you ignored is you act like you know, even if you Google it, it's better if you ask the person they got in front of you. They say, do you know about what prime is? You know, ask the question, break it down, because that could that could kill your business. It could save you, I would say, thousands. And if you're going to be around for a while, maybe millions. Yeah. You know, and I'll say to that point, and I ain't trying to offend nobody, Sam, you know, yeah. but stop listening to people. Who if, if, if you've watched that business be on that street corner for 25 years and there's no growth, they sell the same products, the same people come in there every day. And you talking about you want to scale your business. That might not be the person you want to talk to and no disrespect to them, right. because it's something, you know, to speak to experience It is something that adds value there. But it's like you kind of want to talk to somebody who's been exposed to where you're trying to go. And then because because you always I always hear people come in the office and they'll say, well, my cousin told me, you know, it's the way my cousin do it. And, you know, he's been doing it for 10 years. And yeah. I was like, well, so your cousin is a tax account. I was <laughs> like, oh, OK, so he know tax code. Right. And they're like, well, no, he don't know that. You know, no, he no, he do. um, You know, this he's a chef or whatever, whatever they, they may say he is. And I'm like. Well, you know, you're telling me what this is what I do for a living. So, again, is, you know, we have to get advice from professionals that have expertise in their area and stop listening to people just because, you know, they got some advice for you. Yeah. All well, free advice and good advice. Right. <laughs> what are some you heard me. I said free advice. So. Right. right. But uh, what are some uh, mistakes you wish you could have avoided? Who? <sighs> Who? You we we've talked um, is one not being patient and putting a plan. So what I'm telling you today, I'm not telling you because I've had it perfect. Is sometimes I've 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 jumped out the boat without a plan, mm -hmm. and it was like, oh, let, let's try this. It sounds mm -hmm. good, mm -hmm. um, and, and it had no structure to it. So I get a, I went away from my own principles. Mm -hmm. So I'm not telling you. I'm telling you from a success perspective. And from a failure perspective, don't start nothing but without a plan. Do your research. Know what you're investing in. Make sure you have good partners if you're going to involve people. Make sure you understand who they are. Sam, right. we talk about it all the time. You yeah. know, really dive in. So just know what you're doing before you jump in. Because once you jump in, then the rat race begins. Customers coming through the door. You don't have time to catch up then. Now right. you're trying to fend for yourself. And you're making mistakes as you go, and they're very costly. And then I'll tell you is invest in all your money. Oh, my Lord, did I mm. learn that that was the wrong thing to do. Invest in your cash um, and not <laughs> knowing how to use financial institutions, how yep. to lever leverage assets, you know, how to leverage relationships, um, how to ask the city if they have loans to help small businesses, how to know what resources. So for me is... You know, you know, oh, I want this. I got this. I want to do. I'm going to spend the cash for it. It fails. I'll just walk away from it. No, no, mm -hmm. that's not the way to do it. Uh, and, you know, I know I've been not mentioned. That, that's a question for somebody. The best place or way to obtain funding for starting up cost. 
So, so you mentioned, right? So yeah, so so you want to what you want to do too. Another thing people don't realize is every bank in the market, like we have Huntington, we have Key Bank, we have US Bank, we have Erie Bank, all these great institutions. Every bank too has an appetite for different types of businesses. So you may go to Huntington and they say, well, we don't want to do automotive or we don't want to do dental practices. But you go to Fifth Third and they say, hey, we have a portfolio. We want that. So figure out who wants to bank with who. So before you open that business account, don't jump into the business account. Because remember, they loans follow deposits. Yes. So if you if you have your deposits at Bank A and Bank A tells you no, just know Bank B, if they give you the loan, they want your deposits. So why not ask the questions before you start to make sure they actually want your business to be at their institution? Let's dive into that. Let's do it. Everybody who you you put money in the bank, you know, what is the bank doing with that money? Investing it. (laughs) Investing it and not giving you nothing. (laughs) So so and, and that's that's what I say is, you know, we we for years put money in banks and build no relationships. Come on. Sam, we, we, you know, and I keep saying, I'm sorry, God, this is my brother we, I'm on here with today. So we having a living room conversation. Uh, we, you know, during a pandemic, what did it teach us? The lack of relationships in our community. Man. What happened when, you know, all the banks closed across America and you as a business owner only had a relationship with the teller and you needed a PPP? Who could you call? You can't call the teller and say at home and say, give me a PPP. Right. But if you would have had a relationship in place prior to that, you could have called the banker. You could have. So I say some of it is shame on them and some of it is shame on us. But sometimes I know it's just lack of knowledge. But now yes. that you know, if you have a business, you should have a business banker, yeah. a business banker. Figure out who in the institution is a business banker That's and work with them to build relationships. Today, I needed something done. I was able to make a phone call to open up two accounts. Right. That's right. I said, hey, I, you know, is it possible I can get this appointment? I want to send you this. I want to send you that. I need to open up these accounts. And I was able to come right in. That's right. You know, so I can sit there and get, they already had the information. All I had to do was sign the paperwork. That's right. And they know you too, Sam. So what you just talked about was relationship. And mm-hmm. because they know you, they were able to take you through that and streamline that process for you. So it was able to get done in a timely manner. So again, I would just say I, I would and I advocate for that because reality is, you know, you know, this, Sam, you know, they don't seen the second strand of COVID. We don't yep. know. We can have another shutdown on our hands soon. Yep. And then what yep. happens if the PPP is going and, and now you don't have nobody to call? So if, if I ain't told you nothing, blow. I want you all to blow up your institution's phones <laughs> tomorrow. And I want you to ask if you have a business. Who is my business banker? I need to be assigned to one or I'm going to take some of my, my money somewhere else. That's so right. I, that's that's the first homework assignment. Yeah. Uh, great question here from my audience. How can you how can you successfully market utilizing Facebook and Instagram business pages? So that that that's good. Um, you know, I, I would say one, you want to use them consistently right. and, and figure out who you are on there. One thing is that has become the digital resume. I have learned that more and more and more and more yeah, yeah. just recently. And, 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 you know, that sounds so simple. Everybody's like, oh, I know that. But literally now people will, before they read your resume, they will Google you. And the first place they're going to Google you is your Instagram, your Facebook, because it shows who you are or it should show who you are. You know, some people, you know, you stand in front of somebody else's house. Somebody else's car, you know, all that other stuff. But, you know, I'm just being funny right now. But all that being said is, you know, I say when you go to my Instagram, it's true to who I am. I'm a Christian man. I love my family to death, you know, and I I love what I do for a living. So I talk about, you know, financial literacy all the time. So, again, make sure that you use it, but have an angle to it. You know, make sure it's clean. Make sure it really speaks to who you are because it is truly your virtual resume. So if you do hear why you got, you know, 30 posts with you at the club, what does that have to do with you doing here? Like if I come to you and I want, you know, to get a haircut, I want to see a haircut. So make sure you have that on there. So, again, utilize those platforms, utilize it to connect with people. 
Uh, make sure if you you're in an industry, let's say you're in you're a dentist, connect with other dentists out there. You know, build that platform, build those relationships. I use it for business. Like people are always like, "Hey, Melissa, we didn't respond." I don't stay on that. Man, I post. You know, use it for business. Put out good information. Connect with people and keep it moving. So it's all on how you use it. But it's yeah. a great platform. It's free. It's free, but just use it right because I truly believe how you start is how you finish. Once you put stuff out on the World Wide Web, it ain't going nowhere. You might delete it, but somebody yeah. else ain't going to lose it. So just make sure you know you utilize that for sure. And you can produce content. You can produce, uh, 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 you know, if you got a digital person who can make you some commercials, you can advertise on Facebook. That's uh, right. You can get with like, like you can get with uh, brands that have a, a tremendous following, uh, like uh, right here on ZAK. We can uh, make sure that we advertise to a certain to a certain you know group of people for your brand, so you know you can advertise on Facebook yourself. You can get a you know a company to do it, but use your pages uh, wisely. Uh, people, the, the entertainment's cool, but they want to see that that's really you. Now, if you if you you know buck 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 and all you know, and then you want somebody to come spend some money, eh, you know. You so, Sam, I'm gonna give you an example because I I want to see how transparent this is. is I was on the uh, on the call with one of the CEOs of one of the local banks, large banks in town. My mm -hmm. partner and I, uh, Mel Trees, and he literally went back and found a picture for me for three years ago. He mm -hmm. gave me a. He said, "Hey, I know you like to do this," and I said, "Man, I was thinking like, do I?" <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "Oh yeah, I saw it on your Instagram. You were in such and such and such and such," and it was like. This man is the CEO of a multi-billion dollar bank. He took the time to go through my Instagram. So wow. I'm not talking about your last two posts. I about, now, don't go clean up the last two. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this man went back three years on me. Yeah. So that spoke to that. And I've been having that instance happen more and more and more. So I would just say, like Sam said, market to your demographic, market to people who want your service. Uh, but utilize those put, uh, free platforms for, for, for sure. And Radio One does a great do job with digital marketing as well. I know Sam and some other guys from the team. So, um, yeah, for sure. Um, okay, here's another one from my audience. How do you give yourself exposure to the mentors or businesses like yourself that help assist with knowledge and opening a business? So what you do is you reach out and – um, I had a young kid reach out to me yesterday. He'd been reaching out to me for about a month and I spoke to him on my way into work mm -hmm. and I told him, don't ask me to be a mentor before you get to know me. So how you know you want me to be your mentor? So this is True. like, you know, somebody put on Facebook, you know, you, if you know better, you do better. Mark put that there. And that's right. Uh, so I'm teaching you how to get a mentor. Don't just jump out and say, because you think they're successful. And if you only saw it on social media, don't get it twisted. Sometimes we know some people put stuff out there that is no facts to it. So just because you see the shiny car, like they said, what your mom and them used to say, what well, glitters ain't always gold. Um, yeah. So make sure that they have integrity. Make sure they have character. So he was like, hey, I want you to be my mentor. I said, what do you know about me? And he was like, I, and I said, then I don't even know you. Who are you? <laughs> and, and so I broke it down. I said, let's slow down. I said, tell me a little about who you are. And he mm -hmm. told me about who he was, some very interesting stuff. And I was like, man, that's that's pretty dope. He a pretty dope kid. And then I told him about who I was, how I grew up. And we had a lot of synergies. And I was like, see, that's how you start a relationship. Yeah. So, again, I don't just walk in. That's like walking into a company and say, I want to be the CEO. Like, well, I don't even know what your work ethic is. I don't know if yeah. you're going to stay around, you know. So, again, as you look to do mentors, of course, we're going to look at, you know, we got to look at social because you can't meet with everybody, but you use it as a gauge. But as you have the conversations or get those conversations, uh, you know, they avail themselves. Ask those sort of questions. Yes. Search for their integrity. Search for their character. Because if a mentor to me is somebody that once starts as a mentor, then turns into a sponsor. There's a mm -hmm. difference, Sam. A yeah. mentor is someone who will teach you, try to lead you, try to groom you. A sponsor is someone who speaks on your behalf. So yeah. they go before you to lay and set a table for you. So I would just say to you is 
Now in my myself and my partner's life, we have sponsors. So people that, you know, before we come in a the room, they're like, hey, Larissa and Meltrice, you know, are doing a great job here. So it's like when we come in, the table is set. All we have to do is not make the order. So all that being said is that's what I want our community to evolve to. And I know we got to start somewhere. So look for good people and then look for people in your industry. So if you want to be yeah. an accountant, reach out to us. You know, now I can't say I, I can have 30 mentees. Um, but we're my partner and I are talking about how do we do that? Well, we do group mentoring. Uh, yeah. So it allows us to do more people. So so those are just some tidbits I would have for you. And before before now, uh, we had seminars and there were different things that were going on that you could be in the room with like minded individuals and people who are successful in what you want to start. And a lot of times uh, just a conversation. It might not be the person your mentor might not be the person you were seeking after. That's right. That that's facts. <laughs> that that you know it it was this guy who I would just see him everywhere, and he would just always speak to me. He was very kind, and I just watched how he moved in the room. And you know he wasn't the guy like everybody would have went to. Mm -hmm. And don't realize sometimes it's even in wealth is we look at the shiny stuff and think that's who we should go after and don't realize you know that's that's rich, but it's it's wealth in the room. Yeah, like he the guy in the, in the room that was wearing a T-shirt and the beat up shoes and nobody wanted to talk to him and don't realize <laughs> he was the most powerful man in the room. In the room. Yeah. <laughs> so literally when I started to talk to him and then he was like, hey, fly to New York, um, you know, fly to Boston, fl fly to Florida. And I'm thinking like the guy that like nobody was talking to in the room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, again, it's all what you're looking for. And what I what I respect it is how he treated people. You know, his character, when he said he was going to do something, he followed through, just all that sort of stuff. So, again, and, and that didn't happen overnight. That wasn't the first conversation, you know, Sam. But, again, you do got to start somewhere. But as you're doing that, sometimes watch people. Watch people. You know, Sam, I hear you say this a lot. Pay attention to people. And mm -hmm. Sam would be like, hey, I, I pay attention. I've been paying attention. And mm -hmm. so don't just the first time you meet him, I want you to be my mentor. You don't know nothing about me. Right, right. <laughs> so do some research first. Yep, yep. Uh, how how important uh, is it to have a strong team? If you just tune it in, uh, welcome to starting a business here, hosted by Radio One, our new year, new money, starting a business. And uh, you got to have a strong team. Let's talk about how important it is to have a strong team. Woo. So we, we got multiple teams in our lives. Um, here at CLE, you know, before we really got going, we created my partner and I, Mel Trees, we created an advisory team. And when I said, so, so you listening, you don't need to have a, 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 a established firm to do that, a company, you know, create you an advisory team, people you trust mm -hmm. from different industries that are leaders in the industry that they can give you advice, but don't have nobody on the team that you're not willing to take accountability from. So don't have them there from a name perspective. Or say, you know, make sure it's people that if they tell you close that, that you're going to be willing to listen to them or yeah. don't do that. Now we'll respect that they give you a good, you know, some feedback why you should do that. Right. Uh, but, you know, so we created an advisory team of seven people from different industries and they give us feedback. They help to prune us, help to develop us, help to speak into us, tell us where, hey, you're going too far to the left, too far to the right. Then what we did was we create a staff. So healthy leaders can, um, you know, can be, you know, healthy bosses, you know, can be healthy, healthy leaders within their organization. So if we're sick because we don't have any development or we're not growing, how do we grow people that's underneath us that, that from a staffing perspective? So, again, we try to be the healthiest leaders so we can be healthy to our staff. Um, so I would say we create a staff. You know, your staff is everything. Yes. You don't just develop you, but you develop them as well. Be sure. willing to um, to put back into them so that they can grow as well. Don't get so mad when somebody, you know, decides because you helped them to grow and they leave you. Now they're the worst person in the world. No, you, that just means that you did a great job with them. So, so you're going to get credit, maybe not here on earth, but you'll get credit in heaven for helping them. So mm -hmm. everything ain't going to be here on earth. I'm sorry. Right. Right. When you get get to heaven, a guy open that room and show you all the riches for all your works. So all that being said is, you know, 
So then as a new entrepreneur, Sam, uh, the power of five, you've heard me talk about this. Your accountant, mm -hmm. your banker, your insurance broker, your financial advisor, and then you want to make sure you have your lawyer. The power of five. If you're starting a business, you should have some sort of relationship with those five people if you're trying to scale and create, you know, an enterprise and not a small business. Yeah, I like that. Enterprise and not a small business. Um, let's dive into here, man. Um, how do you not lose hope when it seems like everything around you is failing? Your passion. We yeah. we started off with that, Sam. Yeah. Your passion. Yeah. You know, your passion, you know, and, and being in purpose, you know, um, when, when you're passionate about something, you 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 know you you're willing to go with the ups and the downs. Come it's on, like in a relationship. Yeah. You you don't you don't just leave because you're having a bad month, but you had 30 good years. Yeah. So it, it, it is what, what do you do? You go get counseling, you 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 re, you pivot, you learn how to love differently. Yeah. You 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 make adjustments. Yeah. So the same thing, you know, is it, for this. It, it's like me and Mel Trees, we have a bad month. We have a bad couple months. What we do is say, boo, boo, boo. we got to recalculate. We we take our butt on Saturday, and right. Sunday, and say, hey, ain't no fun this weekend. How are we going to pivot our business to right. make adjustments now? And because we're passionate about it is where you're. So let me back up and say this. Where you are, somebody is praying to be. Always remember that. Say it again. At every level. At every I level. Always say that. They, they, every level. They'll be praying for your your problem, not to have a problem, but just to be in the seat where you are. In the seat. So what we do is we stay humble and get and stay in our passion. So as long as we don't veer off too far, yeah, and we okay. We yeah. we 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 understand it's ebbs and flows. If yeah. one thing, don't become an entrepreneur if you don't want hard times. You can go ahead and click off this webinar right now. <laughs> Repeat that, please. If you're not ready for hard times, don't become a business owner yeah. or an entrepreneur, please, yeah. because it's not for you. That's it right. is not for the faint at heart. I tell you now, we lose sleep. We have sleepless nights, you know, especially when you start to employ people, because yeah. not only do you have your life, your family life, but you also have their their lives, their family lives, the community lives all yeah. in your hands. So you got to ask yourself. Do I want that blood on my hands? You want it. And, and <laughs> so, 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 so let's go there. All right. So let's go there. Come I know on, Sam. You're being kind. Let's go. Okay. So let's go there. So here it is. You have a death in your family. You have a coworker that may have a death in their family. Yes. You may have an outright customer. Yes. You have family situations going. You still got to stand up and come to the table. That's right. You got to figure it out. It, you you really unfortunately my so and shout out to my partner Mel Trees. I have to say this, Mel Trees yeah. Sharp. She lost some people really close to her this year. And when I say one of the most powerful black women, and just women, period, in business in Cleveland, and, and she came to work every day. And I almost forgot because we moved so fast that that she was mourning too. Yeah. But the reality is, if you are an entrepreneur, you don't have too much time to pivot. Yeah. You you got it. You still got that business to run. Am I right, Sam? Yeah, you you, 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 you got to come in, too, and still be able to deliver, have a great attitude. I lost two, two of the most closest men in my lives to me this, in the last six months. Yeah. And some people would say, I never thought you lost anybody because the reality is I, now I, I do. I grieve in my own time. Yeah. I mean, the privacy of my with my family, my fiance, I grieve. But but the reality is I, I decided to be an entrepreneur. I decided to put other people's fate in my hand. We decided to have to pay payroll. So so it's bigger than us. We decide to be leaders and yeah. not watch small black businesses in this community fail. So, hey, don't take on something that involves other people's lives and not be serious about it because it small business and entrepreneurship ain't no game, man. That's really you will lose it all, and everybody around you will mess around and lose it all because you was faking. Come on, come on. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm trying to make sure I get 
the rest of these questions is we got about five more minutes. Do you do people really make millions of dollars in e-commerce businesses? Oh my lord. Um yes. <laughs> yes. Um it oh my yes. So there's an organization here. Um no, Trees is a part of an organization on, on their advisory committee called Jumpstart. And they they're a tech organization. They help tech, you know, need to see more black businesses be a part of that. So mm -hmm. I'm shouting them out. So if you're a tech business, you should be going there and taking advantage of their resources and making sure you get access to them uh, first and foremost. But with that being said, it, it goes back to the plan. It's like any business. Can any business make millions? Yes. In e-commerce, you can, you know, just making sure that you work with organizations that can help you create that plan um, for success and then making sure you tool it up properly so you can get to that place. But we have actually experienced that as a firm working with other e-commerce business that, that are, I, I watch businesses make a couple, you know, three, four hundred thousand dollars a week. And I'm like, whoa. And Sam, I'm like, am I in the wrong business? But again, it's not my passion. If I do it, I probably fail. <laughs> I'll lose three or four hundred thousand the first week. So yeah, yeah. Uh, does your company help with starting a business? So what I'll say to you is we will start from a consultant perspective. We'll we'll help you start with your LLC. Uh, you know, and or nonprofit or to get your tax ID and get all your other um, documents in place. So you can contact us at CLE. Um, you know, if you need payroll for your company, if you need taxes, it's tax season. You know, and, and I want to say this, um, you know, taxes aren't just about, you know, just handing somebody the documents and hoping they give you the best scenario. It's really understanding. What we're big on, Sam, is educate. So mm -hmm. as we sit down with you about that business, well, where's the business going? What type of business? You know, right. what's your growth plan? Because sometimes people plan, you know, for today, like they're not going to grow for tomorrow. So mm -hmm. you got to set the plan today that will allow you to go to tomorrow. So so we really try to strategically educate the people that we're around. So absolutely, you can contact CLE Consultant Firm. Um, and then we do accounting work, of course. You know, we, we want to be the five guys. When we started, we were Ponderosa. You know, we had chicken wings. We had steak, you know, whatever you want to. We had the baked potato with the yams, you know. So but now it's like, hey, you come in, get a good burger. You know, we don't sell chicken. Go to Chick-fil-A for that, you know. Uh, and and But we're really good at what we do from that perspective. Good stuff, man. Now, you recently published, congratulations, 21 financial tips for 2021. Can you give folks a few of the tips? Now, y'all got about a book for all of them, but give them a few. Thank you, Sam. I appreciate that. Shameless plug. So, but no, seriously, though, now let, let's talk about what's going on in the country. Right now, people are losing their lives. If you watch the, the news, you listen to Sam, you know, the cases are out the roof. People are losing their lives. And I'll have to, I have to share this now, you know, with people, you know, with someone close to me just passed away last week. It's the first person that close to me from COVID. So it made me kind of put this one at the top of the list. But I'll say I want you all to create a love letter. And people are like, what is a love letter? A love letter is where everybody listening to me, if you're under the sound of my voice right now, you're going to go to Target, Sam's Club uh, or Walmart, and you're going to get a fireproof safe. Fireproof, cost you 30, 40 bucks. And what you're going to do within that, you're going to put your life insurance policy. You're going to get a health care power of attorney. If you don't know how to do it. What you'll do is you'll go online and you'll research or you'll call our attorney. You'll get a will. You can go online and create your own will until you can afford a lawyer. You will create a will and tell people what to do with the finances you're leaving them, with your funerals, whatever it may be. Don't leave it to the family to figure it out. Put all your bills in there, all your bank accounts in there. Everything that's financially based, you're going to put in that box. And it, you ain't going to be the only one with the code. You got to tell somebody. But before you lock that box, yeah, yeah. what you're going to do, Sam, is you're going to sit down with your whole family and let them know what's in the box. Why do we why are we so afraid to tell our families what we possess and leave it for them when we die to figure it all out? So you worked your entire life, your entire life to build yeah. wealth and say you want to leave a legacy, but you don't even explain how to maintain the legacy. So sit down, talk through the bills, talk through the accounts. 
talk through the life insurance, talk through the investments, yep. and let them know what you want them to do. So my kids, I'm going to give you a plug. I, I'm paying them their life insurance over 10 years mm-hmm. because I realize you're too young to get that kind of money at one time. So everything I worked my whole life to give you, you'll yep. blow in the first six months because you got an entourage as large as the house. So again, the love letter, you're going to get a will. I've been talking about this all year. Yep. People are losing their lives. Why, if you have three kids and three kids got three different religions, you going to make them fight and not be sister and brother because you didn't take the time to tell them how to bury you. Now I'm Muslim. I'm Christian. I'm Jewish. Where are we burying mom at? Mom didn't even tell us. So make sure you have that will in place. Then I'm going to say to you, if you are not, if you don't have, have not taken advantage of that 401k at your job, make sure that you go and call your HR person tomorrow because you saving gas. You ain't driving to work no more. You're right. not buying lunches every day. Yeah. I'm saying I can't afford to save. You've cut back on costs now. So take that money that you're saving, that 30 bucks a week on gas, that $50 on eating out for lunch, that 80 bucks a week, that's $320 a month, that is almost $3,800 a year, and put it into your 401k and get the full match. And if you've already maxed that out, go get you a Roth IRA. But again, that power of five, that financial advisor will sit down with you. And that's just a few. Uh, But, uh, you know, stay tuned. We'll talk about more soon. Yeah, yeah, charged up, man. I wish we had more time. I feel like taking one more question before I leave. Sir. You got a question. We get you we get one more question in before we go. And again, welcome to New Year, New Money, starting a business. Right here with Radio One. Shouts out to everybody for being a part of asking these real questions. Again, just recapping, man. Um, as you you, you you we talked about earlier, make sure you ask the questions. You know, don't don't act like you know it all. You know what I'm saying? You know, you don't. you don't know it all. I'm still learning. Me too, Sam. I'm not going to stop learning. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, and 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 again, you, you when you said earlier about uh, when they asked the question about how you, how do you know this is the business to go into that that passion that drive. You know, um, I mentioned earlier about don't do it. Go in for family and Facebook friends. Uh, of course, you want them to come, uh, but make sure you do it for the consumer. You know what I'm saying? That you that you're hitting the target. You know what I'm saying? Your friends, they love you, but they can't spend their, all their money with you. <laughs> that, that's right. That's right. And, and depend, based on what kind of business you have, you yeah. might only see them once. <laughs> right. That's right. Once they have it, it's like what I if, if if you sell cars and I bought a car from you, I ain't gonna keep coming buying cars. I can't buy a car every week from you. <laughs> Please don't buy because your cousin say if you sold cars, I'll buy a car from you. <laughs> Once he buy a car from you, then what you gonna do with the other two hundred cars you got? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just being silly, man. Hey, so, man. Uh, we appreciate you being a part, man. Thank you so much, guys. Make sure you share this video with your family and friends, and go back and. And watch it if you just came in in the middle or the end. You can always go back and watch it. And make sure you visit cleconsultingfirm.com. And uh, I'll be on the radio in the morning at 10. All right? Check you out, Sam. I appreciate you, brother. Yes, I just sir. want to say on this, man, I thank you for all the work that you do. I thank you how you support me, man. You know, I want to say that we got to support each other more, yeah. especially in times like this. So thank you for your support. And thank you to all the Radio One family. You know, just for this opportunity out there, reset everybody, take advantage of what's going on, scale yourself and create legacies. When things like this happen in our country, the most millionaires are, are have been made historically. So let's create millionaires in our community so we can make real change. All right. God bless everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks, bro.